Perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I will zoom in slightly. So unfortunately, I'm not Aaron, which means you're not going to get the quality you deserve, but never mind. Let's, uh, let's move on. So, uh, but these are Aaron's slides. So uh, starting resource wise, uh, I, I guess it, it's kind of easy. You know, you go to our website and uh, there's the code page there. And so you can download and install that and code's a great way to get started. Uh, there's some setup instructions in the SDK. Um, make it uh, quite easy to do, or you can build it for your, yourself and see the uh, documentation in the source tree. Um, so really, you know, there's several ways you can do that. Um, I personally uh, install the code packages, and there are also Docker images. Um, and you can do all these other things too. So you can configure it to run without SSL or with SSL. Um, obviously certificates, I mean, for me, the, the most difficult piece of setting up Calabra Online is really getting the certificates right. If you want a public server that is running with HTTPS, then you have real problems because you you know you have to have valid certificates and so on and that's i think quite quite a large chunk of the problem and then beyond that you need a, a wacky host uh, that's ready to serve you whichever of our integrations uh, that is so of course that you know in theory that's all you need to do and it's 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 all easy but of course there's a lot more to it than that so i uh, say so one of the things that's absolutely critical then is to allow your wacky host uh, to be contacted otherwise it's it's a little bit uh, problematic to load and save your documents to the storage and get, get authenticated uh, from that of course that's very important that we don't just trust random uh, posts um and yeah again the ssl certificates um in terms of trying to work out what's what's going on there uh the logging logging level is, is really useful to set up while you're troubleshooting and then to turn it down again because we can log practically every keystroke and packet and dump everything um and well, it's incredibly expensive and performance falls through a hole in the floor when uh, when it's turned on. So turn it on and then turn it off again before you start complaining about performance. Actually, these days we warn with an error in the log saying, hey, you know, you know your log level's really high. Uh, yeah, this is not a good idea in deployment. And if you have a, a language that's not in the small core of, of languages that we default enable, it's really important to enable your uh, dictionaries there. So they're preloaded. We actually preload all of the dictionaries. And as we've seen from the discussion, dictionaries can be quite big. So we try not to do that for all languages in the world. Um, and yes, you can tweak your UI. So you have a notebook bar or the more traditional menu and toolbars are up to you. And uh, yeah, you can set the admin console password. I believe it can use the, the root password if you, if you uh, like that. Um, but yeah, we're looking at doing some different things around authentication, authenticating admins. Uh, yes, brand packages. So a code brand or cool cool brand and uh, fonts can be really helpful. Uh, once you've done that, you then really want to run this little WSD sys template setup tool to rebuild the, the, the root or the jail uh, that we use to, to show, show that stuff off. What else? Aha, so the Docker image then has everything packed inside it. And in theory, is, everything is wonderful. Um, and you can build this uh, image yourself using the custom script, or you can just download it from Docker Hub, which is very easy, and configure it via parameters. Uh, we discovered recently that the parameters, uh, well, the, the configuration script was being overridden by the parameters, even if they were empty. So we fixed the bug with that. It should make things uh, generally better for people uh, building their own images. Now, reverse proxy-wise, yeah, so so it's, it can be very, very helpful to uh, obviously not steal V1 port number everyone wants, which is 443, and and then not have to worry about certificate handling because presumably you, you did that all already uh, for your web server or your web proxy. So we can then just plug into Apache and Nginx, uh, or we can use an HA proxy, for example, there are various configurations there in the SDK, and which can then also help you load balance uh, based on this rocky source ground to different, to different hosts. But then, then makes life very much easier. You just run on port 9980 and then uh, forward traffic to that port, I think. So uh, once it's running, of course, you can then see if it's working, uh, which is always helpful uh, by trying to fetch your discovery uh, file and uh, troubleshooting. Yeah, you, you, you know, well, yeah, there's all sorts of failure modes where people get things wrong or miss Mr. Pendencies, it crashes on start and so on. We, we try and have relatively helpful messages in the logs. Uh, sometimes the browser console can be very helpful if you press F12 
you look at that sometimes you know there's an exception or something you're missing um yeah if, if we completely fail to start we usually have a yeah a 70 exit code and again the logs can be helpful um but yeah it's really useful to have your certificates in the right place if you're if you're running with https um yeah beyond that i think this is all good advice and yeah It can also be really helpful to see what the WAPI host is doing. So, so whether you're actually getting the, the document or not, and it's really, really good to look at both ends of that problem and then, then look at correlate timestamps there and see what's happening and try, you know, if we have the WAPI URL uh, that should be there in the logs with a file access token and so on and see if the server that's running this or the Docker image that's running, it actually has access and, and you can actually fetch that WAPI URL. So quite a lot of our figures are, are you know, sort of strange configuration issues where we can't actually get you know, you can't use the URL that was given to us uh, because there's some kind of problem with it. And yeah, when you have questions, just jump into our forums, uh, report a bug if it's a real bug. If it's more of a configuration option, then perhaps the forum is better. Uh, clearly, Aaron is on hand uh, every day uh, with, with Azina and uh, Andrash to uh, help people uh, get set up and answer customer questions. Uh, so we'd love to do that. And yeah, get involved, join the community, try stuff out. Make what you want to have happen, and that's that's me standing in for Aaron. I think think that's about it. Hopefully he'll be around later, but hopefully he'll be around later to answer some questions if there are any.